G'day everyone, how you doing? And I hope you've all have had a safe, wonderful Christmas and New Year's. Here it's been mixed bag weather and I haven't been able to image a lot uh, over the past month almost. Just that wacky time of year where you just can't get as much done as what you want to get done. Also the weather here hasn't been the best, uh, very stormy. But we have a beautiful night and you may be wondering what's happened here. I've only got one restaurant, not three. Well, the house is getting closer to being finished. It's about eight weeks away, I think. So I'm starting to pack up some of the gear, but I still want to do some imaging. But I'm sort of finding this time, I think, would be the best time to do some testing. And the reason I say testing is because I have a new dew shield. I've been working on this thing for quite some time now and the design of it is different to anything that I've done before in terms of learning how to print it, learning how to print with this material, it's uh, ASA. Uh, so there's been a lot of challenges there and I finally got a working print completed. Uh, it takes about one week to print purely because of the settings for the printer to be able to print in ASA and the first print it got about halfway through and we had a blackout and my 3D printer isn't connected up to a battery backup system so uh, yeah it was pretty much ruined anyway let's talk a little bit more about the whole idea and the concept of this new Juice so one of the challenges with my old juice shield was the changing of filters and that was a bit of a pain because you had to put your hands through into the dew shield itself to get to uh, the filter cell so what i wanted to do was create windows on the dew shield that you could slide up and down to access filters uh, to be able to change but then it evolved from that because i got the beta fcct tilt adjuster I wanted to be able to then also maybe have to calibrate the RASA um, so I wanted to be able to have access to that as well. So that meant that there was a bit more design to go on with the, the actual dew shield itself to, um, uh, to accommodate um, those sort of changes. But the other thing too is that I wanted to make my dew shield a bit longer. As you can see here it is much, much longer. And I wanted to try and reduce um, scattered light a little bit more uh, coming in maybe from the sides. Uh, there are a few lights that go on with this rig, um, but also there's a few other lights around as well. And I just wanted to uh, just increase the, the length of the actual dew shield itself, hoping that it would reduce I also made the walls of this dew shield here a lot thicker. Uh, and that and the reason for that is because there's a lot of well there's internal parts moving on the inside of the dew shield here. So um, yeah, it needed to accommodate that spacing. So it's a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. And also the reason I went for an ASA uh, filament material is because I don't know how well it will show up on here, but you might be able to see the warping that has caused, especially there, this dew shield being out in the in the weather, in the heat, um, sometimes. Now, ASA is meant to be a uh, UV uh, resistant type material, and it's also uh, meant to be you know, it's meant to have a, a lot stronger um, properties and uh, be able to absorb more heat before it possibly warps. Uh, being this is a, a prototype piece, um, it's 
taking a little bit to try and get used to the settings printing in, in ASA and that's a bit of a challenge especially the complexity of this uh, dew shield for me anyway uh, but really happy with how it's turned out the other difference between this dew shield and this one here is the little locking mechanism that goes in and locks into the pins so with this one here it's like a bit of a maze um, to lock in to uh, the actual um, rasser itself and the reason for that is because the extra weight on the front would sometimes unhinge um, the actual dew shield itself and that's why in some of my previous videos you saw tape running around here and that's just to make sure it doesn't unlock itself and come out because of the extra weight so there's been a fair bit going on with the design of the uh, of the new dew shield the other thing too i want to um also add in eventually is a little piece that slots into here so that way it can cover up the hole um, and come down and then the, the cable can sort of come out here to again reduce light from going inside the uh, inside the rasset but at this stage I haven't designed that part yet it's just uh, this part here and you can probably maybe put a bit of foam or tape or something like that over it um, for now just through maybe testing but I don't think I'm going to worry too much uh, about that now let's throw out the old and check out the new <laughs> that smashed <laughs> anyway um, so the main point of all this is to slide up a little window so you can see inside you can pull out the uh, the filter um, you can adjust the the screws here for the uh, the tilt and there's also one on the underneath as well now Now the one on the underneath um, is a little bit looser and it will just drop back down uh, so I might try and tackle that a little bit but I'm not too bothered because I don't access the camera from from the bottom so when it's down it, it's down and it's it's fine it's just when you push it up and you're in a position like this it will just drop back down again but that bottom one is mostly for the um, the screws for the beta uh, filter now it does block um, light coming in from uh, from these angles here so this slide does go down deep enough to be able to block that but it also allows the um, dew ring uh, so the, the Celestron dew heater ring uh, cable to come out the top here as well so at the moment that's still tucked in there um, but it can come out the top here and then you can also um, close that so there's some grooves in the actual lip to allow the cable to uh, to come out so that's all the changes that I've sort of made to the uh, to this uh, new dew shield that I'm trying out um, I feel like there could be a couple of slight tweaks in this this dew shield uh, I want to make these sections here a little bit a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger and I'm looking at making like a bit of a, a wedge type system so it, it marries up with the uh, beginning of the the rasa here um, and comes back down this way so that way and and a couple on the bottom as well so that way there's sort of like a a bit of a point that it can sit on as well um, and just adds a bit more strength into the actual uh, unit as well all right so what i'm going to do is i'll adjust the rasa and that way you can see inside okay so as you can see uh, I've painted the inside of my dew shield in uh, Musso Black um, and it is quite a significant uh, difference in terms of the length of it compared to the older design as well as the thickness of the actual shield itself and you see it's quite thick now I don't know if you can quite see it on camera but um, just opening it up there it gives me a lot of access into the actual rasa without having to um, disassemble everything all the time um, because those that uh, own rasas would know that when you got all your your, your dew shield on and, and everything else like that and you might need to make some slight tweaks with the uh, um, uh, the culmination of it or uh, 
just changing filters or anything, you know, it's, it's a lot of taking things off, taking things on, um, especially if you've got a mono camera anyway. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're a bit fiddly, the old Rasa. I'm hoping that, um, this is the, pretty much the, the last design that I do for these G-Shields, um, to get this going. And as you can see, there's a crosshair section, uh, in this actual, uh, Rasa as well, because I personally do like, uh, diffraction spikes. I like that Newtonian look, um, Astro Images. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like the uh, the Newtonian look of the star spikes and people, you know, can add spikes in afterwards through processing or, or whatever they want to do. Um, but this is how I personally like the image and this is how I'm designing them up. Uh, there may be a, some point in the future where I try and run a, a ring system um, through it and that way it can give nice well hopefully round stars without any diffraction spikes but i'm not looking at doing that anytime soon because i've just got so much going on at the moment uh, and it's going to get even more hectic uh, in the next probably few months now the other thing i want to talk about is reflections rasses are known for reflections throughout the system especially when you're using uh, you know, quad band or tri band filters, or anything that's rejecting light back through the system can create halos. And one of the things that I've wanted to try and do for this is just reduce it as much as I can. Now, while I was cleaning, because this is RASA number three, right? So while I was cleaning the, the RASA, I, I actually pulled it all apart again. Um, and I painted the inside of this tube in uh, Musso Black as well. One of the things that I noticed when doing that is that, and I don't suggest to everyone <laughs> go and do this at all, uh, because it, it, the moment you pull apart a Rasa, your optics are going to go out and then you've got to re readjust everything. So one of the things that I noticed is that the inside of a Rasa um, is very, it's, it's coated in this like black paint that is very similar to Musso Black, meaning that the moment you touch that um, black layer, it's like a powder almost. And Musso Black is like that too. It's, it's, it's like this powder once it dries. Uh, so when I painted it in Musso Black, I noticed it got a little bit darker, but not terribly darker. Um, but I am hoping that that's enough, as well as the, the painted uh, inside internals of the uh, the dew shield enough to hopefully maybe even reduce reflection some more now there's one way to test this and we are going to be imaging Orion because Orion's up and it has some bright stars around it we might even uh, flick over to the red horse head and get a little bit of imaging data on that and see how we go I'm going to be shooting in luminance and I may if I can get some time I may shoot in uh, the OptiLong uh, F2 Extreme uh, filter as well. Throw that in there because that's going to be rejecting a bit more light as well. And, uh, and we'll see how it handles uh, reflections. So with a bit of luck, everything works out really well. Uh, if not, we'll see how we go. Anyway, well, it's a beautiful clear night. Well, afternoon, evening. Uh, just got to wait for it to get darker. I'm going to uh, polar align it, fire it all up, and get in here. So everyone, this video was meant to be about the new Jushu and, and the design. However, when I was imaging, I noticed a whole bunch of reflections. Now, normally I wouldn't ever see reflections. And that's because when I image my uh, imaging setup, I'm usually shooting at a zero gain uh, and around about 90 seconds uh, of exposure time. So. When the images come through on um, on Nina, 
I don't see a lot of detail in the images. It's usually once the images have been stacked and then stretched, I see all the detail. However, I wanted to change things up a little bit uh, moving forward with my gains and exposure times. And what I notice is that I see a lot more detail now on Nina when the images come through rather than through the final um, stage of things. So when I was doing that, I noticed that I had these big giant reflections sort of happening uh, in the system and I wondered if it was to do with the dew shield. Well, it wasn't actually to do with the dew shield because when I took the dew shield off and pointed it at, I think it might be Regal, this is what I got. This giant donut um, with, as you can see, the cables going through here. The image is perfectly um, you know, focused. It looks really good. I mean, there's a whole bunch of weird spikes going on here. Um, I know why uh, that's the case. But anyway, this is this is it. And this wasn't done with the rasa that I painted in uh, Muso Black. I actually changed the rasas over to um, rasa number one just in case I thought it was something else that I had done. And it, and it, it isn't. Um, in fact, I don't have a picture because I didn't uh, save the snapshot, but with Rasta number three, the uh, reflections weren't as bright. Um, they were, so the Muso Black did work a little bit, but um, I still noticed the reflections. So this is why I changed everything and switched to this. Um, now, I decided to start um, imaging, and I think we got it right here. So I decided to start photographing um, the horse head. Now this is a um, single shot image of the uh, the horse head here with um, just a stretch done, and, and that's it. Just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. And if we zoom in, on the image we can see there's that reflection sitting right here now I was curious to know if that reflection would show through in a stack and the reason why I was curious is because when I started doing the imaging session and I was watching that that um, uh, reflection between each dither the reflection would jump around or move slightly. So I kind of figured that the dithering could be helping to eliminate the reflection in a stack of images. So I stacked 10 images um, and this is uh, the result of 10 images uh, stacked. And as we can see where it sits right around here, there is no reflection. I mean, this is a JPEG um, shot, by the way. That's why it's all pixelated right now. But you can see that, um, yeah, there's no reflection in here whatsoever. So I then started to uh, investigate a little bit more in terms of star brightness because there's a lot of times where um, this particular uh, star here um, can cause a lot of issues in people's astrophotography in reflections or um, uh, you know, side, um, I can't think right now, side reflections coming in from um, an angle. Usually baffles can sort of help, um, I guess, with, with this sort of thing, but the Rasa doesn't have any baffles. And that's the other thing, I've been thinking about making baffles for my Rasa and reducing the aperture down to maybe an f2.2, f2.5. Uh, we'll think about that later, but right now, because I, I've I want to know what causes reflections in the Rasa. Um, and there's two things I'm thinking. And one of them is the actual uh, optical cell that the um, that holds uh, at the front of the Rasa. And I'm not talking about the corrector plate at the front, I'm talking about the actual cell itself. And when I've pulled apart my Rasa quite a few times, I've noticed that that cell is actually quite shiny and black. Black and shiny. So. Anything shiny with light shining on it, which is a, a, a bright star, could cause problems. Um, so I might look at tackling that in the future and just seeing 
what I can do there to reduce the brightness and see if it works on reducing halos or um, reflect, reflections even. Uh, the other thing I did notice too is that I was changing my filters over so I've got a whole bunch of different types of UV IR cut filters and the one that gave me the, the best results in the less amount of reflection throughout the system was the beta uh, UV IR CMOS optimized filter. Um, they do a UHC um, CMOS optimized filter as well, which I've been using a fair bit, especially when shooting the SMC project. Um, and I've also got the uh, Optilong F2 L Extreme and the um, Astronomic UV IR, uh, I think it's an L1 um, filter. So the beta gave me the best results. And what I might do later, if you're interested in me reviewing uh, those sort of filters and showing you the difference in reflections with them, um, because basically what happens is that any light that the the um, filter is rejecting bounces back through the system and it creates a more of a um, halo effect around bright stars. Uh, but when you're... Um, not reflecting that light back and you're basically letting all the light through then that sort of um, reflection comes down a little bit um, that's my experience that I've noticed anyway so when stacking I got this result here now I wondered what would happen if there were brighter stars or a series of stars so I figured we'll start we'll keep in the area the constellation of Orion and we would move to um, uh, the three stars of Orion, I can't think of the names right now, but here we have um, the middle star and right here we have the reflection. If you zoom in a bit more, you can sort of see it here. Now, when I shot 10 images, just like this four set, there's only 10 images stacked. Um, did a quick stretch, there we go. And we can see here that there's no reflection caused at all um, there's some vignette and all that because I didn't use any calibration frames so this is just a, a 10, 10 image stack just to have a bit of a look we've got the three stars here with the flame um, just down here flame nebula and you can see that throughout the whole image there is no um, there's some uh, halos around the stars but there's no actual reflections causing throughout the image so I'm not too bothered, um, too bothered by it, especially the bright, brighter the star, the uh, stronger that reflection sort of is, that side reflection is. Uh, because I know that using a reasonable dither, um, somewhere around about 10, well, I've been, I was using around about 10 pixels um, at distance dither, that was enough to move the that um, uh, ghosting sort of effect around a little bit so therefore it was uh, rejected and stacked out um, of the image which leaves a, a really nice result um, so yeah overall I think the uh, the juicy worked well um, it makes changing filters a lot easier and um, and it's not a cause of any sort of reflections, it's just the RASA system itself. Uh, there is one little, th there are a couple of things I would like to tweak with the shield and, and maybe make it a little bit larger in diameter uh, because right now it's basically like a funnel. Um, so it's the, uh, uh, the retaining ring on the corrector plate, um, that black little, uh, little ring or the Jew shield, uh, the Jew ring. Um, even is uh, you know hidden so it's basically just a funnel of light going straight through into the RAS of the same uh, diameter as the inner ring uh, but what I think can happen is that um, that dew ring or the corrector plate um, that holds the corrector plate in can act as a bit of a baff baffle in a way uh, so I thought about maybe changing that a little bit, but there's still a lot of things I'm going to be uh, messing around with the RASA to see what I can do in uh, reducing reflections uh, throughout the, the RASA system uh, more 
uh, especially when you're photographing bright stars. Uh, when you're photographing dull stars, it doesn't matter um, uh, whatsoever. I mean, it, it's pretty much fine. But it's the brighter stars, especially around like Orion, um, where there's a lot of big bright stars, that these reflections can happen, and I want to try and uh, reduce it. So, yeah, that's basically what's been happening with this um, YouTube test. And I just wanted to uh, interrupt, well, pretty much uh, change the video around a little bit and talk about exactly what um, what I saw, what I've come up with, um, and ideas. And, uh, and yeah, uh, if you have a RASA and you're imaging with a RASA and you have these sort of reflections or you've been um, having trouble with the reflections yourself, and the stacking and dithering and stacking hasn't worked to um, eliminate those uh, reflections. Let me know in the comments below um, what's been happening. And, uh, and hopefully we can all get together and see what we can do to reduce reflections um, all together on a RASA. So uh, yeah, if you've uh, liked this video, give me a big thumbs up. Um, if this is the first video you've seen, please check out some of my others. And I know this video is a little bit different, uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully it's uh, you know given us some uh, a bit more knowledge on how the uh, the RASM might work a bit more, and how we can improve our uh, astrophotography, and how I can um, improve some of those um, RASM uh, dew shields that I've been designing and, uh, and building. Uh, and one last thing quickly before I go, if you have purchased one of my uh, 3D prints. Um, for the Rasa Juice Shield that you are printing yourself and you're in another country, um, you know, Europe or America or something like that. Let me know in the comments below where you can get your uh, 3D prints from, whether you've been doing it yourself or whether you've been getting um, somebody else to, to do it for you. Uh, because as I try and make things cheaper for everyone to be able to... Um, yeah, access these 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 3D print files for you guys to print yourself. There's postage and, and all those sort of things are pretty pricey. I'm hearing that the actual um, prints themselves, other people printing them, is costing a lot of money. So um, yeah, I just want to try and help those that are uh, wanting to get their th prints done, um, but don't want to pay like. $200, $300 to get it done. Um, that's to me is just absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, if you can uh, help out a little bit, leave a comment down below. Alright, so that is it for me. So, until next time, take it easy, guys. See ya.